Wichita, Kansas, Prime presents the fourth stop of the Brunswick World Team Challenge. Welcome to North Rock Lanes in eastern Wichita. With Hall of Famer Earl Anthony, I'm Dave Armstrong. Hi again, everybody. And Earl, as we take a look at the competition here today, what we have seen so far this weekend are pins flying all over the place. We should see some more high scores. Well, definitely we're going to see some great scores. And this has been the highest scoring event we've had since our first year, back in 92. And in December of that year, we had 10 teams average over 200. This particular round, we had actually had one team where all five guys averaged 218 plus, which is fa just fantastic scoring. Well, youth has certainly been served here in Wichita, but also so there is a lot of experience, including our top qualifier, Columbia. It's amazing how young these guys can be and still be this good. And I think that comes back to the collegiate programs that are in the area, especially teams like the University of Nebraska, Wichita State. All these teams have great coaches, and that's what we're going to see on television today. The, the team that, that is representing Columbia has been outstanding all week. They've got a lot of past experience in the World Team Challenge. A lot of, a lot of these players have been on winning teams before, and that's one of the reasons why they led this event. Well, speaking of winning teams, how about our team in second place right now, Nitro R is the big one. The World Team championship in 93 and they led the qualifying here which is the regular six games of regular team play going into the match play they were the team to beat they had about a hundred pin lead on uh, team columbia but columbia came right back and put it on them in match play and those are the two teams you would expect to win this particular event one of those two all right what about our third place qualifier then north rock that's the spoilers nobody knows what's going to happen there this is a team that could come out of nowhere and i think maybe ebonite and uh, uh nitro r is going to be looking over their shoulder at columbia and vice versa north rock could be the spoilers and come up and win the whole thing. All right, we'll find out then. Will North Rock be the spoilers here today? We'll be back with our opening match in just a moment featuring North Rock and our second place qualifier, Ebonite Nitro Rs. We'll have that in just a moment. Mike Fleming back up for North Rock Lanes. They got the left-hander on top, and a lot of times they do that just to get him out of the way. He get struck his way. first time, strikes again. Strikes again, but normally the teams, if you've watched the World Team Challenge, you'll see the teams have the guy that up on top, here's another look at that shot, and look at the good rotation here. He's playing between third and fourth there on the left side. A lot of side rotation, or spin, you might say, to get the ball well down the lane before it hooks. And the point I was going to make as you get another look at Drew Hyland here, uh, the point they want to make here is that they've got a guy that can keep the ball in play. Get it, get it in the pocket area, reads the lanes pretty well, and can line up the rest of the team. Can't do that with a lefty. Mm -hmm. Drew Hyland, the 1995 U.S. Amateur Champion. He won that title just a couple of months ago in Reno. There's another look at his style and that great free arm swing. One of the best arm swings you'll see. Really free and easy from the shoulder. It creates a lot of ball speed and a lot of side turn in the back end. Crossing over. Oh, my. North Rock. They like it's their home lanes, right? They're, they're getting all the breaks right now. Two Brooklyns, and they have strung together five in a row. See Westbrook Lanes with a 12.06 high game out of Columbus. And then this Nitro R team right there. Chris Barnes did bowl a 300 today. Yeah, but he made a major mistake when he did that. He had the wrong kind of bowling shoes on. If he'd have been wearing wind bowling shoes... Lens of the man, that's what you want to wear. It's a thousand dollar bonus. And that's what you want to wear anyway. Well, they're the best shoe anyway, so what's the difference, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. How do you bowl 300 without having lens on? You can't do that. Can't it's do not it. not even possible. I don't know how he did it. I don't either. Well, he's a great bowler. He must have found a way that nobody else could find. Well, they're stringing the strikes together now. Well, he tried to Ooh. hit the pocket. Major mistake. <laughs> the 2 8 10. Yeah, they've been crossing over. Left and right here to string together five in a row. But now a possible open, very tough spare here. Well, we're getting the kind of scores that we expected, even though we haven't gotten them the way we expected to get them. Throw it nice and hard, try to bounce this into the back pin. And he didn't quite get it. But if he'd got that to bounce off the eight and then over into the ten, it's kind of like you've got to pray a little bit, but unfortunately it didn't work. 
Barnes as part of that 300 game also rolled a 743 series. Barnes team by the way came in fourth place and look at these qualifying averages. Rick Miller plays for Columbia. He's their anchor. You'll see him in the championship match. You got the sleeper now. The two and the eight, and very unusual release here. We've seen it before, and I've commented on, in my opinion, it's kind of unusual because he really has a great arm swing, but when he gets to the bottom, it's almost like he's jerking the ball off his hand, or jerking his hand out of the ball, I should say. Here's another look at it. Look at the high arm swing. Now watch at the bottom here, how hard he rears up as he comes up at the foul line, and look at him pull real hard on the ball, and tremendous loft. But a hand comes out real quick, right there. Oh, good shot. He has made two very difficult spares. Well, he's a great spare shooter. He makes generally above 90% of his spares, and uh, you can do that. You keep your team in the high. Boy, despite five straight strikes for North Rock, that open frame very costly. Their lead just three. Remember, it's two games, total pins. Well, after they finish this first game, the teams will switch lanes and see what they can do on their opponent's lane. Runyon through the head pit. And now he's got the 3, 6, 7, 10. Tough spare here. The idea, of course, to fit the ball between the 3 and the 6 and have that 3 pin go all the way across, take out the 7, and the 6 pin will take out the 10. So you shoot it kind of like the baby split. That's how you'd want to play this. Line it up to get the ball between the 3 and the 10. And the 3 pin should cover the 7. Just a little bit of the 3 pin with the ball. Cross lane. He's going to hook it a little bit. Here we go. Look now. Oh, three. So, boy, back to back open frames for North Rock, and they have really opened the door for Ebonite Nitro R. Yeah, it's still anybody's game here. Mm -hmm. and, and the important thing that we found in the past is so many of these matches come, it almost always comes down to those last two guys. So just try to stay close. Working on a spare. If it comes down to those anchor men, and there's a really a bad break for the Nitro R team, a good shot there, and very seldom we see the seven pin stand on a light hit, especially with these resin reactive bowling balls. But, but Dave, if it should come down to the anchor men, you got to look at the numbers that Steph has put up there. The guy is 72% strikes in match play today. Mm. Hasn't missed a spare all day. This one's almost in the bag, isn't it? Right at it. Can't, can't try to hook it. It might just hook into the channel. Good cover there. Make it 13 for 13 for Ilani Walachek, the 1989 Chuck Hall Star of Tomorrow. Well, let's see what Steph can do here in the 10th frame. This is the man that's got all those strikes. 43 out of 60 attempts. Remember, he crossed over his last time. This time he makes the adjustment, but not enough, and goes right through the head pin. Now well, he's not real happy. He's going over to get his spare ball here, and this is going to be an opportunity for him to get a little more feel for it. It looks like he's just a little, maybe a little nervous to me, David. The three and the six. He wants to get both pins with the ball. A 2-11. possible. Oh, my, but he missed the spare. Well, that's more than nervous. That's panic time there. That's a giveaway, and, that's, and you can't do that when you're bowling a team with uh, the kind of experience that the Nitro team has, and uh, it just amazes me that that would happen. You talk about a swing of emotions in one game, five straight strikes for North Rock, and then three open frames to close out game one. And what it amazes me, here you got a guy, Chad Murphy, up here in the 10th frame, 24 years old. He steps up there and throws the ball really well and gets the 7-10. Oh, oh, my. Oh. Hello there. That's about the better break you can get in bowling. Eh? <laughs> Unbelievable. Huh? And this happens generally, not always, but generally when the ball is just hooking so much, it's behind the head pin, and it rolls out, and instead of driving through and creating a power in the pocket area and the five into the sevens, you might say, it just kind of goes blah. Perhaps a little bit of anger thrown into that shot as he goes for the dreaded 7-10. But that open frame in the 10th, two, look at this, 206 to 199 in game one. Those seven pins will carry over to game two in just a moment. Mr. Bowling in Wichita, no question, John Crum, who is the proprietor here at North Rock Lanes. I've known John for a number of years, as I'm sure you have as well, Earl. And in fact, you were telling me today that Wichita, Kansas, was your very first pro tournament. Well, as a professional, I had bowled three events uh, as an amateur back in the early 60s. 
Uh, but as a professional, in January of 1970, I came to Wichita and bowled my first tournament after I joined the PBA. And you finished second. That's and, very impressive. Well, it was a it was a, a pretty pretty good barometer of things to come, you might say, since I had a whole bunch of seconds after that. But it was uh, it was really an experience. It was January in Wichita, which is always uh, palm trees, you know, things like that. Oh yeah, delightful. <laughs> I'm sure the wind was not blowing. Not blowing more than about 50 miles an hour <laughs> with about a 30 degree below zero wind chill. Tough spare here for Drew Highland to open up. But very well done. Very well done. That's a big pick me up for Nitro Rs. They lead by seven as we head to this second game. Now the lefty, I think, has been perfect so far, hasn't he? Two for two. You know, look at that spare shot. Cross the lane, playing between the third and fourth arrow on the left. And the idea here, as we mentioned, get between the three and a six, and you saw how well balanced he was at line. Balance creates accuracy. If you get to the foul line and you're balanced, you generally get the ball to go where you want it to go. 4-7 here for the left-hander. One of the more difficult spares for a left-hander because it's quite easy to chop the four off the seven. You want to use as much of the lane as you can. Go right at it. A lot of ball speed. Well done. Teams open with a spare in game number two. That'll bring up Paul Fleming. Paul, the 91 U.S. Ambitor champion. Also a Team USA member in 92. He was on the University of Nebraska National Championship team in 1990. <laughs> Waiting in the wings, Columbia. They will face the winner of this match for the championship here in Wichita. Now the general, Tom Patton. Patton so far today, a spare and a strike. Well, they're going through the nose a lot here on this lane. And they've done it, both teams have done it quite a bit so far today. Yeah, but it looks to me like, uh, and it, 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 it's typical. Uh, you'll see the team with the most experience starting to make the better shots when they need them. A lot of times adrenaline will take over now for a team like North Rock, who hasn't been here very much, and they'll get all pumped up and make great shots or get a couple of lucky breaks to get them going. But right now, Nitro R is the team that you've got to watch. They're the team with the experience. They've won several of these in the past. They're 1994 World Team Challenge champions. Uh, basically the same lineup. And so they're going to go out there and they're going to say, hey, we've been here before. This is how you do it. Here's one of these amateurs in bowling that bowls for a living, Billy Murphy. Well, there are a lot of amateurs that make a very nice living not being on the Pro Tour. Well, there's no question. What it really comes down to is uh, the way I would put it, if you really want to get me in trouble, and I don't mind getting in trouble, what the heck? If you're, an, if you're an amateur bowler in this country, you bowl for the money. That's where the bucks are. If you want to be a professional, you bowl for the glory. <laughs> you get the you get the television coverage and the and the uh, your name in the paper as a professional, but you make a lot more money as an amateur. Any way to fix that? Oh, I don't know how you do it. There's just uh, the only way that it's kind of obvious. You got to get bigger sponsors to put more money on the pro tour, which is the lifeblood of bowling. My the best advertising vehicle there is is the American Bowling Congress working together with the Professional Bowlers Association that promotes the game, and uh, so we just need professional sponsors and we need the, these corporate outings cor corporate people to get behind bowling in general and of course professional bowling to start with here's another one that bowls for a living mark birkenbein and earl i won't leave you out on that limb all by your own so i agree with you i agree exactly what you're saying it's the only sport i'm aware of where you can make two or three hundred thousand dollars a year performing it and doing it for a living and still be an amateur well, we've got quite a match here. We're in game two of this two-game match, a nine-pin lead for Nitro Rs. In Wichita, North Rock trailing right now by nine. We're in the second game of this two-game match. Lonnie Wallacek, another one of those amateur bowlers who bowls for a living, member of the 93 Wichita State National Championship team. Look at this. Look at that. A little over kill there. And uh, Lonnie, who's one of those guys that can create a lot of back end, and you do that with leverage, his approach pattern is to start in the middle, walk to the left, and swing the ball behind him, and create all that leverage and try to get that back end. And it's just almost an overkill. Here's a look at his approach. See him walking left, swinging the ball behind him, and then throw it out to the right. And that creates a shorter follow-through, and you, you follow through up instead of out, and creates more hit on the back or more 
rotation. The ball breaks more sharply on the back. Unfortunately, it went about two feet too far before it hooked. Tough spare. Yeah. Got it. Out of the pit. Come on. Oh. We talk about a break. That's the break of the match. Well, it very well could be at the end of this one. It could be the determining factor. Here's another look at it. Watch the two pin go into the pit. Bounces once and the, the head of the pin comes out. Just gets the base of the 10 pin. Mm. Here's another. That's a better camera angle. Look at the shot here and watch the head pin at the back at the base of that pin. Just gets nudged by the top of the other. What a huge break for Nitro R. Well, that's how you answer those kinds of things. You just get up and make good shots. And that's what Keith Runyon did. We've got a very, very close and competitive match here with North Rock swinging two straight. They have pulled it within four. Well, it almost, <laughs> almost without a doubt will come down to the 10th frame unless one of these teams gets extremely hot. If it does, how do you pick between a guy that's been throwing over 70% strikes and Larry Stepp as opposed to the guy that's been there for all the money right here, Chad Murphy? Chad Murphy with... That open frame on the dreaded 7-10 split. This guy here has got to loosen up a little bit. Larry Stepp, they need him desperately. He was a guy that helped really get him to this position. He has to start freeing up that arm swing and let it go. Boy, he's really struggling right now. He had one crossover strike, and then in the 10th frame of the last game, he had, I believe it was just the 3-6 remaining, and he missed it. He missed them both, yeah. This is what you call, and we're going to give you a, a shot of a guy going to the foul line. And this is what I call the resin reactive approach. Watch his hips. They're going to open, turn to face you here. You see that? And watch he's going sideways to the foul line. You can see what he's doing with his arm swing? Throwing it across his body that way, and he squares the hips up at the foul line. That's, a, that's to generate ball speed, and you need that kind of ball speed to throw the resin reactive bowling ball successfully. If you can't throw with above average ball speed, the ball tends to overreact. You can't control it. You can't keep it in the pocket area, so you lose what it's best at, and that's giving you tremendous strike power if you can just get it in the 1-3 pocket. Uh -huh. Well, our match dead even now at the halfway point of game two. I like this game here. Watch this arm swing. Real free. Look at that. Look at the follow through. Generally, he gets strikes. I'll tell you what, this guy can string them out. And uh, he's going to be on Team USA next year. That shows you what kind of talent he's got. Drew Hyman, 1995 National U.S. Amateur Champion. Good player. Collegian All-American. He's the kind of guy that even the guys on the team he's bowling with, who are all outstanding players, like to sit around and watch. Mm -hmm. They like to sit around and just watch him practice. That's how good he is. Mm. How steady that head is. Mm -hmm. doesn't move. Eyes don't move. Same everything. I mean, every shot he makes is identical to the one before. All right, here we go. Mike Fleming, we need to see, get something going here. It's getting late. Again, through that head pin, and he leaves the 2-4. Keep leaving these difficult spares for a lefty. What makes this a difficult spare for the lefty is, is the fact that the pin that is closest to him is in the same direction his ball wants to hook. And it's so easy to chop that two pin off the four right now if he's not careful. But he covers it nicely. My grandfather started Lin Shoe Company in 1919. Imagine, look how close it is as we head to the seventh frame. It is still anybody's game. No question about it, and they we're running out of frames. And this is where Paul Fleming and the Ebonite Nitro R's have been successful in the past. We'll see if they can hold off North Rock. Mm. Ebonite, who finished third in the Grand Championships in Reno this past summer, and again won it in 94. Fill the frames still. That's the, the byword in this format the Baker system fill the frames based on that stat he should Whoops. look out Whoops. look out now that's the kind of thing you very seldom see the team like this with this kind of experience they've been here we've talked about it so many times and he misses a spare in a key situation his last opportunity in this two game 
total pin match to help his team, and he missed a very easy one pin spare. Now he'll sit there and just pray his team can come back to win this match. Oh, well, well, got the break right back. Sure did. The 4 9, a little high in the pocket area. He rolled it well. Ball just hit a little too hard, a little high in the, on the high pit, on the head pin, and didn't deflect at all. And the idea here is to get the ball, just shoot the seven pin. Pretend that the four pin's not there. Try to cover the seven pin with the ball. The ball should get enough of the four pin to slide it in the nine. He'll go down the left side of the lane and hook it just a little bit of the end. Didn't hook for him. Nope. Well, it's the uh, same separation as the 5-10 for the righties, but again, he didn't get far enough to the left on the four pin. Look at this, though, with three frames to go, Earl. We've got a one pin match. Whew. Just about as close as it can get, and if we should have a roll off, the players can pick two players and they'll bowl a ninth and tenth frame, two players from each team. Billy Murphy has made some tough spares today. That time going for the strike, and will he get the 10? No. Well, here we go again. It just <laughs> mm. comes right back down to it. You miss an easy spare, the team gives it right back to you. That You've got to feel very fortunate. And then Billy got up there and made a great shot, leaving only the 10 pin. Three-time Collegian All-American at Wichita State. Look out. Ooh, good hang on. Fair in the eighth frame for Nitro R. And now here's Mark Birkenbein. North Rock Lanes, I think, has the advantage starting right now. Uh, they have two things going for them. They've got one more frame to play, so if he were to strike here, they could add to it, which he did. Mm -hmm. And now they can add to it, and we have a, an increase of 10 pin lead over what, where they were before. In other words, they pick up 10 pins here that can't be answered by Nitro R. Mm -hmm. Right now discussing the line where they were throwing the ball, what they were trying to do, trying to discuss strategy amongst their own teammates. Now Lonnie Wallacek working on a spare. Look at the eyes. Look at the concentration here. He knows how badly they need this one. Lots of room. Got the job done. That's his first strike of the day. Right when you need him the most. He's coming down to the guys that the reason they're down there in fourth and fifth is they're the guys you depend on in the clutch. And look at the walk to the left. The swing behind him, throw it back to the right. All that leverage, that's the reason he crosses so many boards. He needs to. If you're going to throw the ball like that, you've got to give it plenty of room to hook. Okay. Load it up for the anchor man. That's what this guy's job is right here. Keith Runyon. Good shot. Yeah. You got him to mix around and go down. That's a double for North Rock, and they take the lead. And that's what made that frame in the seventh so important, that strike in the seventh, because it created an opportunity for the double. And there's that lead that we were talking about. Now it comes down to the anchor man. Chad Murphy at a slight advantage here because his team is on a strike. He gets first shot at it, so he can finish first. Puts all the pressure on Larry Stepp. Or, if Chad were to make a mistake, Larry can get up there and just play safe. And remember, Larry Stepp has really struggled so far. Look at here. Oh, he wiggled the 10, but it won't go down. Oh. Oh, my. There's some, uh, there's some language being used on that 10 pin right now that you don't normally call it. It's called the 10 pin. Call him by number, not by name, they used to say. <laughs> <laughs> All right, for the spare. You never know what's going to happen. He's, he's got to calm down here, pick up this 10 pin. It's not over yet. As you mentioned, Larry Stepp hasn't been the guy that you'd want to go to in this match up till now, anyway. Well, Stepp so far with a crossover strike, an open for a six in a spare, and then we'll see what he does here. Well, Chad taking a lot of time here. Come on, Chad. They don't get those pins. They're just waiting for somebody to knock them down. Pick it up and throw it. Larry Step on deck, trying to relieve the nerves. Think about what he needs well, to do when he gets up there. This is what you call a little gamesmanship. Now, Chad's taken all this time because he wants Larry Step to think about it. It's kind of like in a football game when you call timeout just before the guy kicks the field mm -hmm. goal. Same idea. He's trying to make him think about what you got to do to get up there. Well, that's a 183 finish. 
Nitro R in game two after a 2.06 in game one. Well, Larry knows what he needs. Best shot he's made. And the 10 pin. Well, Step has missed a couple of spares today. In fact, he missed the 3 6 Pick earlier in this match. Spare to win. Spare to win right here. Thousands of times, and what do you, can you believe it, Earl? The 10-pin, the anchor man who really, really collapsed under this pressure. Well, mm. I, I got to believe not even Nitro R is happy to win that way. What a shocker. What an absolute shocker. And Abonite survives. That's the best word for it. Ebonite survives. They'll move on to the championship match. When we come back, we'll take a look at the bowling news. Now it's time to go around the bowling world. Former Motor City bowling great Mike Totsky has been elected to the ABC Hall of Fame in the veterans category. Totsky, who was named the King of Detroit Bowling five times, passed away in 1990. A member of the former National Bowling League, Totsky will be posthumously inducted at the ABC convention in March of next year. Elected in the meritorious service category was retired St. Louis writer and PBA Hall of Fame member John Archibald. Honored in the pioneer category, Frank Brill and Henry Moore round out the inductees. Brill won a pair of titles in the first ABC tournament in 1901. Moore was the inventor of the plastic-coated bowling pin. ABC Hall of Famer Jim Schroeder was inducted into the Greater Buffalo Sports Hall of Fame last month. Schroeder joined 10 other honorees, including former NBA player Bob McAdoo, former NHL performer Craig Ramsey, and baseball great Sal Magley. WIBC Life member Clara Morton was recently inducted into the Knoxville Sports Hall of Fame. Morton has served as the Bowling Hall of Fame and Museum board president. Looking to improve your game? The Equipment Specifications Department at Bowling Headquarters in Milwaukee has scheduled a series of instructional bowling clinics featuring the advanced computer-aided tracking system. Clinics are available in both one- and two-day sessions and include classroom instruction as well as online analysis with the CAT system. Bowlers receive an instruction manual, mathematical analysis, a computer printout, and a videotape of their game. For more information, contact Dan Speranza at 414-423-3259. The 1995 American Bowling Congress National Tournament recently ended and plans are moving full speed ahead for the 93rd annual ABC Tournament to be contested in the Salt Lake City Salt Palace. It will take three weeks for the construction of 48 specifically installed lanes and automatic scoring. February 10, 1996 is the opening day and more than 10,000 teams are expected to compete. The Women's International Bowling Congress also is preparing for its national championship tournament scheduled for the Buffalo, New York area. Transit lanes and throughway lanes will host the event starting April 5th of next year. Throughway lanes hosts a World Team Challenge event the week prior to WIBC's opening. For information on how to enter either one of these exciting national competitions, please call toll-free 1-800-211-1358. We'll be right back with a championship match of the Brunswick World Team Challenge from North Rock Lane. We welcome you back to North Rock Lanes in Wichita with Earl Anthony, Dave Armstrong. We're ready now for our championship match. This is like a Cornhusker reunion, isn't it? Columbia and Ebonite Nitro R's. No less than five, both present and a former University of Nebraska bowlers here today. This is Ryan Kretsch Murray current junior at the University of Nebraska. He starts off for Columbia. Top qualifier coming into our championship match. And he leaves the 310. 
not a difficult spare for a player of this caliber. The only thing he's got to worry about right now is nerves. Just try to keep his coat, get his cool, because the opening frames for the team coming on are the most difficult. Uh, the advantage, obviously, to Nitro are because they've already bowled a match in front of the cameras, in front of this audience. And a good conversion on the mini split. Let's take a look at the Contour Power, power Grip starting lineup for Columbia. Brought to you by Contour Power Grips. Pioneers in the finger grip industry. More pros choose Contour Power Grips. You should, too. We'll see O'Keefe, Beasley, Miller had been their anchor throughout Baker format today, but they have flipped the lineup, and Kevin McGurr will now anchor the lineup for Columbia. Here is Drew Highland, solid in the first match today. Is over for the strike. Well, the lanes will go through a transition. We've talked about this before also, David, was the dressing that's on the surface of the lane, this being a synthetic lane, uh, even more so, I think, the oil tends to move around. The bowling balls, the resin reactive bowling balls, pick it up, absorb it in the first 15 feet, the head area, and move it down the lane a little bit, and that changes the ball reaction. It takes a little while to get used to that. Didn't take Brian O'Keefe very much time at all. Let's take a look at some more numbers from the tournament here in Wichita. You see Columbia was in second going into the Baker format qualifying today, but then in Baker rolled almost a 214 average, and where they really made up the ground was in their match play record, 8-2 and two overall. Gave that one plenty of room, and really it uh, had an opportunity. If you can hit light, we usually carry, but instead leave the seven, uh, excuse me, the ten pin on that uh, behind the head pin a little bit. Cross lane, and uh, you know we talked about spares being fairly easy. They're making them look tough. Mm -hmm. Now here's round by round. You see these were the top two teams for pretty much the entire tournament so far, and here they are going head to head. All Fleming going after. The 10 pin, a 10 pin that was missed by Larry Stepp of North Rock to cost North Rock the first match. And don't you know, Paul Fleming probably more relieved than anyone, because remember, he had an open frame on his very last ball. And now Jeff Beasley. Jeff, a junior at the University of Nebraska. He's a good-looking kid, isn't he? He looks mm -hmm. like he should be in a Superman film. Look at that. The glasses. <laughs> and good roll on this one. Well, that's a superhuman effort. There you go. He's got his cape and his bowling bag back there, there and he's ready go. to go. That's a double. No, well, Nitro R is going to have their hands full. There's no question about that. Team Columbia proved that in the match play portion of the tournament when they, you mentioned they averaged 214, mm -hmm. and they came on very strong to take the lead and keep it from a very good Nitro R team. Murphy made some tough spares in the opening match and none will be tougher than this. Well, he's going to throw this one about 180 miles an hour. It might be like skipping rocks across the pond and just try to hit one of those to bounce out of the back end. Here's another look at that. You see how he lifts up so hard on the ball and the ball just went a little bit earlier than he expected at 4-6. There's a good look at it going through the field. I love that camera. I do too. Look at that ball get down. Mm-hmm. Right? It just wouldn't bounce off. So an open frame for Ebonite, and they trail by 23. We'll be back in a moment. Trying to give Columbia three in a row. Columbia leading by 23. We're in the fourth frame of game number one. That one went a little bit high. What well, do you uh, reckon the reason is for the lineup change? Columbia had been going with Rick Miller as their anchor throughout all of Baker qualifying today. You know, I really don't know. It could be a, maybe the lane condition, ball reactions they had in practice is the most likely thing. Mm -hmm. If one player is getting a better ball reaction, they'll say, hey, let's, uh, you know, let's put you down there where we might need you in the 10th frame. So the spare for Rick Miller. Lonnie Wallachak now coming off the open frame. Uh, I can go so quickly, as we've seen, and mm -hmm. it almost always comes down to the 10th frame. Give you an idea what goes on in one of these. We had 36 teams here in Wichita, Kansas. They bowled six 
qualifying games, regular team qualifying games. Total pins determines the top 10 players. They carry that pin fall over into, into the Baker system match play, and they go 10 two-game matches, including a position round, to determine the top three teams. See Chris Barnes anchoring this team that finished fourth, Ebonite. They were in the TV finals once upon a time, but then fell out late in the Baker qualifying out of Edmond. In fifth and sixth, H&B Ball Factory. We'll look at some of the other top ten finishers in just a moment. This is Kevin McGurr. McGurr was solid. And he's not leaving, folks. He's just going after another bowling ball. <laughs> McGurr was really solid or old in practice. He just almost tried not to throw strikes and couldn't seem to do it. Everything he <laughs> threw down there was a strike. Well, both these teams uh, were outstanding this week. You know, we talked about the scores, and it's pretty obvious when you're, when you're going this well. Another look at H&B. And in seventh, big shooter out of Oklahoma City. In eighth place, Brunswick Quantums, including Gordon Vatican, the bowling coach at Wichita State. And speaking of WSU, they finished ninth. Had to have the coach in front of them, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Finishing in tenth, Kelly's Pro Shop out of Omaha. We've seen them in our championship finals before. Well, they had an opportunity to get back into the match there a little bit, and Chad let me get away through the nose of 3-6-10. Yeah, I had a chance to catch up with Gordon Vatican, an old friend, a bowling coach at Wichita State. His men's team has won three collegiate championships in a row, and two years ago, both his men's and women's teams won the national championship. Well, he's been outstanding. Uh, he's up there in that category with Fred Borden, who coaches Team USA. All these guys... Uh, they really study the game, and they know how to make the player get the best from his physical abilities. The lead is 20 for Columbia as we head to the sixth frame in game number one. Remember, total pins for these two games. Gordon was my broadcast partner when I used to work here in Wichita. We did several There's televised Gordon. bowling events. Hiding behind Marcy there. Mm -hmm. right, right. A little bit of a break there. That's what you need to get the team going. You get that kind of a break, and you see the guys coming up off the bench. They're a little pumped up there. And there again is Kelly's Pro Shop out of Omaha, the team that qualified 10th and finished 10th. That's a veteran team. We'll see those uh, those five guys back four or five more mm -hmm. times if they don't win one of them. They'll, they'll be trying hard. Good free swing again. Good rotation. Through the nose. Look at this. Mm, my. Oh, my is right. That now. moved the six <laughs> pin, but didn't move it enough. Didn't move it over. Well, he's got the three, the four, and the seven here. And here's another look at that arm swing I was talking about. I really like his game. This ball just breaks very sharply on the back. And he had everything falling, but got a little help there to stand that one back up. It was the three. I thought it was the six moving around in there, but <laughs> where it moved, he just couldn't pick up that spare. So that will increase the lead for Columbia as we head to a break. We'll be back with this championship match from North Rock Lane. Now you referred to Marcy. She is a member of Lynn Chu's team. She's tried to qualify in the past, and her team will be heading to California for one of our women's Qualifying tournament, so uh, Marcy and her team all psyched up and ready to go. Oh boy, psyched up and certainly ready. Brian O'Keefe for Columbia, that's a double for them. Here's a look at the upcoming calendar here for our Brunswick World Team Challenge. These are men's events coming up between now and the end of the year. We'll be in Pennsylvania and California next month. And Missouri and Colorado. The month after that, answering with a strike for Ebonite, a much-needed strike, Paul Fleming. Now they're starting to get away from him. They've got to get something going before Columbia builds up an insurmountable lead. Right now it's about 44-pin difference, and Columbia on a double. A chance to extend that lead, another 10 pins. Mm -hmm. Here's Clark Kent. Clark Kent. Jeff Beasley. <laughs> He's a good-looking young man. He's got a lot of bowling talent. A lot of roll here. I like it. He's got two strikes in this game. Now, the ladies' events for the WIBC events of this Brunswick World Team Challenge 
next month. Fountain Valley Lanes and Sunshine Lanes in January, and then again Showboat Lanes also in January. And those are the same as the men's events, those last two. Tom Bodecker, the man to call if you want to enter a team in some of these upcoming World Team Challenges. Put a team together and give it a shot. It's a lot of fun. An important double there for Nitro R. They're just trying to stay close. That, that mm -hmm. lead again is still 44, and both teams on, uh, as well, Columbia on three in a row here in the lefty. They need this lefty right now in the ninth frame to get something good for him. It looks like looking good, and he just sawed that rack in half. Well, he's certain did. And it's a four-bagger for Columbia. Well, now you know why both these teams are on top in this top three for the televised finals. These two teams were dominant throughout this long, tough Baker format, especially. They were outstanding in match play, Columbia being the team to beat. They won eight of their ten matches in match play. Didn't we talk about high scores in the Open? Yes, we did. We have not been disappointed. It's the first time we've been right all year. <laughs> <laughs> about anything. Oh, boy, the seven would not go. And that could be disaster because, again, Team Columbia on four in a row, a chance to put the match out for a big 250 game, mm. and Nitro are only going at a 180-plus pace. That 70-pin difference could be really something mm -hmm. to overcome in the second game, almost impossible. Earlier in match play, it was Ebonite losing to Columbia. Very close, though, 422 to 405. Going right at the 7. The lead 55, though, and it could be a lot more if uh, Kevin McGurk can do some damage here in the 10th frame, working on four in a row. Remember, though, it's a two-game match, and they'll switch lanes. That could change things quite drastically. No question. When they switch lanes, you never know what's going to happen. Hmm. Well, there's a break, really, for Nitro R. That was a great shot. He got it, it in the pocket area with a lot on it. Left that 10-pin. The pin didn't come out of the channel. And very important here for Kevin to not get careless. Make the spare. Keep the team on a, on a mental up. Well, the spare there now. 236 possible for Columbia. Outstanding opening game. 92 is the best that Nitro R's can do. A 234 finish. That's an outstanding game for Columbia to open up this championship match. You know, we talked about why they switched maybe their fourth and fifth players. It could be the fact that Kevin has a lot of professional experience. Kevin McGuire, a PBA champion on the national tour, and he's won eight regional titles. Maybe they felt that experience that he's had you know, bowling and professional competition might stand them in good stead in the 10th frame when they might need him to throw that strike under pressure. Mm -hmm. Well, they cannot get the breaks. Ebonite right now, a 10-pin stays. Hard to complain, though, when you yeah. got the break in the first match that they got. Oh, boy, <laughs> it's unbelievable. No Don't see that very often. Poor Larry Stepp. You feel for him missing that 10-pin. All he had to do was mark, and it would be Northrock in these championship finals. Instead, it's Ebonite, but, boy... They're going to have an uphill battle in game number two of this match. Well, this team has been there so many times before, and we've talked about the fact that they won it in 1994, the big one. They were the world team champions. They can do it. They're capable of picking up this kind of a lead. You know, we talk about it's going to be somewhere in that neighborhood of mid-50s, 54, 55 pins. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, that can happen in four or five frames if a team can start striking, and the Nitro R team is capable of throwing the big game at you. Oh, oh my, that won't pins. help. Four pins. Oh, that my. will not help the cause for Nitro R. So they are going to go into our second and final game of this championship match in quite a hole. And Drew Hyland and Ebonite Nitro R's come back from a 59-pin deficit. You come back, we'll find out together. The final game of our championship match, it's Ebonite Nitro R taking on Columbia. Columbia with a huge lead of 59 pins. And it's up to Drew Hyland to try to get the Nitro R's off to a flying start here. Well, it'll be interesting to see what the crossover does. In other words, the teams have to switch lanes after the first game. 
and how well they adjust because the lanes are never quite the same. Well, that's exactly what Ebonite needed. Exactly. Well, now it's up to Columbia to answer. They have to keep the pressure on and just make sure that Ebonite Nitro R runs out of frames before they can catch up. In a Baker format, 59 pins is not a safe lead with one game. No question about it, but I'll tell you what, if this team right here at Columbia can just get 10 marks, they don't have to be strikes, 10 spares, they're going to win. Mm -hmm. That's and how you get the team back in the match. Actor. He also hold on Gordon Vatican's team in this tournament. Baby split, 310. Idea to fit the ball between the two pins. Let the ball deflect off the three pin into the 10. You really need to fill these frames. Make the spares. Put the pressure on Nitro to catch up. Oh, oh. There's a donation. It oh, could oh. turn into a 21 pin exchange right there in the first frame. If the strike here is 21 pins difference that quick. Feel that team getting a little tighter now? Well, I think they're getting a little upset right now. Yeah. I'm not sure, too sure how tight they are, but he still has to strike to make it worthwhile mm -hmm. right here. Fleming going for the double. Got it. You might say this is a team of destiny based on that first match, and it could turn around in a hurry. We talked about it so many times. Another look at the pin reaction here. Look how far out and down the lane it is before it hooks. The head pin comes on the front, coming all the way back across, kicks out the 10. Well, if they come back, it would remind you of the Seattle Mariners in that New York series, eh? They came back and won that. Look at this. Oh, Look at my. this, folks. Oh, boy. The three and the four. You don't see this very often, the three, four. We just saw it a minute ago, but he had the three, four, seven. But the three, four, this is kind of unique. Tough spare, but not as hard as it might look. There's a, Even though the pins are quite well spread apart, there's a pretty good angle. Fit it in there just like you're shooting the baby split. Try to fit it between the three and the ten. You'll pick up the, you'll pick up the four. Good covering. Good try. Mm, nice try. Well, back-to-back -back opens. Here we go. So it's the same spread as the 5-7, right? The 3-4. Pretty, pretty close, mm -hmm. yeah. A little better angle at this one. Yeah. Though. Boy, look at that. 27 pins. Remember, the lead was 59, and in just two frames, just like that. Wow. Yeah, and if they strike here... <laughs> That'll cut it to 17 if Billy Murphy can make it three in a row. Penny Dodd, boy, is that a solid shot. And you think that team isn't pumped? They know this, this is it, boys. This is our opportunity. Columbia is feeling the heat. The lead just 17. Somebody from the crowd yelled, go Nebraska. That can apply to a lot of these bowlers. Like this guy, Jeff Beasley. Mm -hmm. He turned around after that last strike and he looked at the rest of his team and said, come on, let's go. <laughs> well, he got a break there. He got that one really down quick on the lane and it rolled early for him. The 6'10", they're having trouble keeping the ball to the right-hand side of the head pinner on lane 32. See how quickly the ball was off his hand? It was already on the, actually behind the foul line it was rolling. Through the middle of the head pin, and fortunately the seven pin went out. This is really a big spare. Got to fill this frame. Get them started in a positive direction. Mm -hmm. Had two splits, two open so far. Now a spare in the third. Yeah. Got to get this team. Look at them. They're all just yeah. kind of slouched down. They got their heads down. Got to get them pumped. They That's need one of those guys to be a cheerleader. That's a study in body language right there. You bet. Now, perhaps, if Lonnie Wallachek can strike here, the lead would be just seven. Boy, to cut 52 pins off a lead in just four frames would be amazing. Oh, and they did it! Well, still got that 300 game alive, too. That's right, $25,000 bonus if they can roll a 300. Another look at that last shot. And all that power. Look at the rotation of the ball. Comes in behind the head pin and just dices and slices. Got them all. And now Rick Miller answers with a strike. Rick Miller, the lefty. We've got pretty much an even match now, yeah, David. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we wouldn't want it any other way. <laughs> it always seems to work out this way, no matter what. 
if it were one game, there would be so many of them like this that would, uh, that would end so quickly. But it's only fair that both teams have to bowl on both lanes. Mm -hmm. Chad Murphy can give Ebonite a lead with a strike. Look out. Oh, now the brakes are going their way. <laughs> that keeps it going. Five in a row and a three-pin lead for Ebonite. And the Jersey squash here. This is high crossover, and you just kind of push him down like a bulldozer, and that's what happened. Has to answer. Great shot here. Oh, really nice for Kevin McGurr. A double. Oh, the match is joined. 59-pin lead once upon a time for Columbia. And Ebonite has knocked 52 pins off of that with five in a row. A chance to take the lead right here on this shot. Oh, yeah, a little bit lucky to get that seven pin out of there. That stops the spring, but still. Boy, did that ball go early. He just really got into that one, got a little extra on it, as so often happens when you're on a string and come back from a commercial break. Uh, the tendency is to get a little more on the ball, maybe soften up a little bit, and the ball overhooked for him. Not an easy spare. Now he has to be careful. This could get Columbia really pumped if he were to make a mistake here. He doesn't. Well, that lead is now nine pins, and Columbia can make it 19. So the ebb and flow of this game, this game of bowling, especially team bowling, it's great to watch, but boy, can it be nerve-wracking when you're down there competing. Kretschmer, just 21 years of age. Just has to give it some room. Give it a chance. He doesn't do it. Got away with it. Out of the pit. Carried the 10 pin. That's what it looked like to me. If we can get another shot of that one, it'll be great. Because watch this, folks. Watch what happens to the 10 pin. Watch behind the 10 pin. The pin in the right-hand corner. Now watch this. It comes back out of the pit. Mm. Oh, coming up from behind and tapping on the shoulder. Well, there's Paul Fleming again. Well, we've got the emotions going. The Nitro R team trying to get really pumped and make the Columbia team maybe feel a little bit like they're overmatched. But Columbia's not backing down. Well, they're working on three in a row. So young and yet so talented. Mm -hmm. It's amazing. This is Beasley. He's just 22. Really hit that one hard. Crossed it over. Oh, my. Well, there's a little answer for some of the breaks that Nitro R got. Mm -hmm. What a match. What a match. Here's another look at it. The ball really never did get to the right side of the head pin. Just stayed on that line there, but it got enough of the left side of it to push out the back row. So a four-bagger for Columbia. How quickly things can turn around. The Ebonite starts with five in a row. Looks like they're going to just run away and jump all over Columbia. Columbia answers back. Well, Murphy's light. Really needed that go. one. Really needed that one. Two pin only. Columbia now with a chance with three frames to play to really put this match away. And Nitro R checking the scoreboard. All their guys looking up there. They know exactly what the score is. And there again, how quick are the emotions in this game? A major, oh, major oh. error. Unbelievable. I don't believe that. My goodness. Huge error there. Ebonite. Right back in this match. Let's give Columbia some credit, though. They could have folded their tent here today, but instead they came back and have answered with four in a row. And now Jeff Beasley. Jeff has to get it over the foul line now to give it a chance. Can't set it down early. A little better there. A little better there. <laughs> Are they getting the pin action That's a now? lot better there. Isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> but he got that one out in front of him a little bit, and that was the difference in where the ball ended up. Watch this. Now, it's out in front just a little bit there. You saw the daylight between the foul line and the bowling ball, mm -hmm. and there's the ball reaction. Went well down the lane, and that's what he was hoping for. The important thing is he didn't throw it through the nose, and he got the good pin action. And Lebanite now needs a strike from Lonnie Wallachuk, and then they have to hope Chad Murphy can strike out. Running out of frames, the major thing was the eighth frame, one pin spare miss. Mm -hmm. 
Uh, you know, it's it's kind of strange, isn't it, how it can go, what goes around comes around. They've gotten to this point, Nitro are, because their opponents missed a one-pin spare in the tenth frame to give them the match. Mm -hmm. Now, all of a sudden, that one-pin miss could be the difference in this match. Columbia shooting a huge game here at this point after that start. Open, open. Come on, Headpin came flying across the lanes and knocked out the 10. Well, the combination of the resin reactive bowling balls, the synthetic lanes, the phenolic pin deck makes those pins just jump and fly. Oh, is that solid? Rick Miller comes through with another big strike. He has three strikes and a spare in his four frames. Now, Chad Murphy has struggled in the 10th frame today, so it's uh, going to be interesting to see how he can perform right now. And of course, McGuire for Kevin McGuire bowling for Columbia has been pretty solid. Through the nose, got lucky. Only the 4 7 briefly had the big four there, and that's the match, folks. Mm -hmm. This is uh, Columbia's to win. They led it through the match play. Nitro R led the qualifying rounds. Columbia took over in match play, dominated the match play. They were 8-2, and two, averaged somewhere in the neighborhood of just over 214 in the Baker system match play, which is phenomenal. And they came through in the clutch today, David. Yeah, they did. I'll tell you, when their backs were getting up against the wall in this second game after Ebonite had started with five straight, these guys came back in frames 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and nine with strikes. That is outstanding stuff. I'm not sure they even know they won yet. They're sitting there like a funeral of some kind. Mm -hmm. It would be very, I think that they know they won now. You can see. Yeah. <laughs> They're not really, they you know all through the match, they weren't really up there emotionally involved to any big degree. They looked like they were losing. Well, a 222 finish for Ebonite Nitro R's. The rest mm -hmm. of the team are just kind of clapping politely there yeah. for Kevin McGuire. It's like, well, I expected him to do uh, that. Oh, hum, of course. Yeah, well, we've been here. We don't. We know how to do this. Nothing to it. They Seven beat one of the finest more. teams in the country by beating Nitro R, though, so you have to give them credit for that also. Absolutely. Remember, they finished third in the 95 Grand Championship and won it in 94. Well, what do you know? Something other than a strike. What a great finish after those mm. two opens. Got a little smile there, and... Uh, the young guys, I think they may be afraid to show all these kids are 21, 21, and 22 there. They're afraid to show the emotion because they don't want anybody to think that they're bragging or anything, maybe. Huh? Mm -hmm. think? <laughs> well, how about that? A 234 in game one. And they answer that with a 236 in game two. And Columbia wins it going away. Wow, what a finish. Columbia, outstanding stuff from the fourth frame on. They strung together seven straight, and they will advance to the Grand Championships coming up next summer in Reno, Nevada. We'll be back to crown the champions. Brunswick World Team Bowling Challenge is brought to you by Brunswick. Bowling is sold on Brunswick worldwide. By Lynn Shoes for the performance approach. It's American-made Lynn Shoes, the choice of top professionals and amateurs alike. By the ABC MasterCard. Get a grip on your finances with the ABC MasterCard. By Keepsake, designer and manufacturer of championship ring awards. By DBA Products, the industry leader in lane maintenance equipment. By Avis Rent-A-Car, the official car rental agency of the American Bowling Congress. And by the American Bowling Congress and Women's International Bowling Congress, providing championship service to sanctioned leagues across the United States. Make sure your league is sanctioned by the national governing bodies. There's your champion, Columbia out of Lincoln, Nebraska. They advance to the Grand Championships next summer. Well, the Nebraska Cornhusker football team is undefeated, and these guys undefeated here today. Congratulations. You guys led by 59 going into that final game, and then all of a sudden, five straight for your from your opponents. Did you guys feel a little bit of pressure there, Kevin? Yeah, we were starting to get close. Chad... Uh Made sure we were feeling a little more than we wanted to, but uh, <laughs> the guys battled back. Everybody bowled great all week. Uh, we jumped on Rick the whole tournament. He bowled fantastic, and 
you know, we get we were fortunate to come away with a win. Yeah, more than fortunate seven in a row will do it and get the job done for you. Jim Otterstrom from Brunswick is here with our plaque. Kevin, on behalf of Brunswick, I'd like to congratulate you on a great tournament. You guys bowled well all week, and we'll look forward to seeing you this summer. Congratulations. Thank you. All right, in addition to the plaque, we have some beautiful keepsake rings. Here's Frank DeSocio, who is the general manager here at North Rock Lanes. Well, I want to thank everybody in the staff here at North Rock Lanes for a great tournament and really want to thank uh, the ABC, the American Bowling Congress, for bringing this great event to Wichita. We're glad to hear, have them here. And great champions from the state of Nebraska. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know? There's some people here from Nebraska that somehow missed that football game or something. <laughs> anyway, Rick Jensen is also here from ABC with uh, Lynn's jacket. On behalf of Lynn's, I'd like to present you with his championship jacket. Congratulations. Great shooting. Thanks for being ABC members. Look forward to seeing you back here in Wichita again next year. Well, Earl, this was a tremendous uh, championship team here today in Columbia. And I have one more question for Kevin before we get down to your end of the line. Why the lineup change? Why did you guys uh, switch Rick Miller from the number 5-0 position to 4-9 and you ended up being number 50? He just felt like it wasn't quite, you know, he wasn't as comfortable on this pair as what we had down there. We had a lot more hook down there than what we had on this pair. And I had a better reaction than what I had down there. So we tried it and got lucky. And it worked. He asked all the questions I wanted to ask you. There was one other thing I wanted to talk about and, brought, and bring up. That was the fact that you guys sat on the bench all through those strings of strikes. Nobody seemed to be reacting. Not one player on your team seemed to be getting excited. Well, I think it's just the way we are. Uh, we don't get too, we don't get too emotional. We know what we have to do, and uh, we expect to strike. So. <laughs> uh, that's what I like to hear, confidence, right? Yeah, boy, they were confident, they too. They were confident. Uh, you know, and certainly, Earl, they had a chance for them not to, to lose their confidence in that final match when they actually were losing by three pins. But that seven-bagger, boy, when you can string seven of them in a row together, that's got to make you feel a lot more comfortable. Well, yeah, we got a couple real big breaks. I mean, you know, if, if we don't carry a couple of those Brooklyn, I had a Brooklyn and they had a, you know, a pretty high trip four. If those stand up, we're, we're behind. I mean, it's just, you know, we were fortunate. All right, Kevin, again, congratulations to you and Columbia, our champions here in Wichita, Kansas. <laughs> Brunswick World Team Challenge Telecast comes to you from Hawthorne Lanes in Vernon Hills, Illinois. Check your local listings for dates and times. For Earl Anthony, this is Dave Armstrong saying so long from Wichita. This has been an ABC Eagle Productions Telecast.